All right, so we just learned a lot about off-camera flash and what we can do with it. That's lovely. Now let's go do it. So I have my Profoto B10 right here. We have a, this is the OCF2 line of modifiers and I have a full and a half CTO gel. We're gonna magnet those together. Keep that there, we'll definitely play with that. I'm shooting with my Canon EOS R. I've got a 20 to 72 2.0 lens. This is an RF lens. And then in my bag, I have a 135 2.0 lens. That is the EF lens, but I have the adapter. It'll work great. Some other things we'll play with today. I have a Lastolite reflector. I don't have an assistant today, which is something a lot of people request that I teach. So I'm gonna show you how I hold the reflector, just little old me without an assistant. This is a Manfrotto stackable stand. So just one of my favorite stands that I use. And we also have the Pro Photo OCF softbox. This is the uh, two foot Okta. I've actually never used this particular modifier and I found it in the back of my closet today. So we're, uh, we're gonna go ahead and use it, but this is gonna do a great job lighting Juliana's face. And Juliana, by the way, is right over here next to a really awesome Jeep. <laughs> uh, so let's, let's go ahead and shoot. So let's start off with one of the easiest ways to use off-camera flash and my personal favorite to give any photo a real pop. Now, this setting, it's completely cloudy. If you're going to shoot with off-camera flash, ideally you find a place with shade so it's a little bit darker and you have more freedom to mess around with the light, being that you're not fighting the ambient light as much. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and turn on my B10 and I'm gonna throw it pretty far back and again, there is a CTO gel and a half here. So I want to look for things that the, the light can shine through. So this is a perfect spot. So I'll probably end up having Juliana over here. So let me just throw this back even further. And we're all checking for ticks later. Another thing you want to make sure you do is place it kind of high, but kind of low. You know, if you're shooting during golden hour, you want that horizon line level. And I also don't want to shoot it directly at my model's back of the head. It's going to look unnatural. I'm going to sort of aim it this way, knowing my model will be there, and then it will spread across my entire background, making it look like a sun streak. So we've placed Juliana in the spot where the light is gonna hit the back of her. And she's got a little bit of depth to some of everything that's happening in the background. Now the sun is coming in and out, so I wanna make sure that I put her in a space where she's mostly in shade. So again, my light, the flash, is what's really gonna control what's going on. So let's go ahead and get an exposure. Now, I don't turn on my transmitter. In fact, I usually take it off completely uh, because depending on the camera that you have, sometimes there are different automatic settings with you know being able to see the exposure value. I am shooting with the mirrorless camera and then also being able to go above 250th of a second. So I tend to get my exposure with the transmitter off completely. So we're just looking for a basic exposure as if we're not um, using flash at all. So. That looks pretty good, a little bit warm. I've set to 5,900 Kelvin, which looks pretty good. And we are at 125 on the ISO, 160th of a second and 2.0. So that looks like a pretty good shot. And then when you take a photo, you can always check the histogram and make sure that it's looking nice. Now I do have some blinkies, I call them some blown out spots, but I'm not too concerned about them. They look pretty good to me. So now what I'm going to do, go ahead and put my transmitter on, lock it into place, turn it on. And at first I'm just going to have it on TTL. I can hit the test button to make sure it fires and we're good. TTL is just going to give me that roundabout exposure. It's like auto for your light. So I'm gonna let Profoto do its job in getting my exposure as quickly as possible versus running around with a light meter. That's my preferred method. Do what works for you. This looks pretty good. We've got a nice golden glow behind her. I think I'm on it a little bit brighter. So what I'll just do is go ahead up to here. I will hit manual. And then I'm going to go to my plus right here and go up. Let's just go up by two and see what that does. 
There we go. Now that's more what I'm looking for. A little bit brighter, much more separation from the background. I love what the light is doing to the grass below and the trees above. I am going to crop it out. I mean, I could leave it there. That honestly looks exactly like the sun was peeking through there. And then I would just have to edit out the uh, light stand. Uh, but I hate editing, so I don't want to edit. So I'm going to take it out now so I don't have to do it later. All right, so now we have our exposure set. Let's just get shooting. So just kind of give yourself a little pose this way. Nice. Oh, the fun thing is I have actual sun flare coming in too, so there's that. Perfect. Look down like that again. That was really pretty when you, yeah. And then just eyes up. So this is looking really good. I want to change my lens just because I want to show you what happens when we go from a 70 millimeter all the way to a 135. It changes the way that the light flares into the photo. Perfect. Just a little closer. Love it. Ugh, your eyes just pop. You can always eat your hair, it's fine. <laughs> All right, so you can see how when I put on a long lens, instead of the light just being behind her, it actually sort of fades and hazes over the photo. In a way, it makes it look a little bit more natural or a little bit more like what I would be looking for as if it were the sun behind my subject. Now let's go ahead to just lighting differently. We're not gonna do the backlight thing. I'm gonna show how I would light her in the front to still make it look natural in a situation like this. Or maybe I wanna use a reflector for one. Let me do that first. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out my reflector for a couple of shots just so you can see how you can use off camera flash, but with a reflector. So it looks like a two light setup, even if you don't have an assistant. So you're going to use a reflector and hold it just like you would, except you're trying to catch. You can do either one. You can catch the sun, the real sun, or you can catch the light that's behind. So I'm going to take a look. I think I'll use a white side. And personally, I do kind of like a crisscross thing. This is just the most comfortable for me to hold this. It's up to you how you want to hold it. Um, but for me, this is kind of what works. Turn your head a little bit more towards this. Yep, because that'll be your main light now. Nice. Lovely. Let me just see how that worked. Oh, that worked really well. Take a little step forward. Just your little in the sun. A little bit more. Right. A little bit more. Right there. Good. So I'm just moving her forward so she didn't have so much of the sun, the real sun, <laughs> hitting the back of her head. Oh good, now the sun went away, which is really what I want. Love that. Perfect. Oh, and let's do somewhere we see the back of your shirt because it's really cute. Nice. And then look all the way towards this thing. And then eyes down love it all right so using the reflector just added a little more pop in her eyes and just made it look like a nicer setup gave her a little bit more catch light now let's go ahead and switch and just light the front all right so we're going to go ahead and build the ocf softbox and we do need a speed ring for that note all these are color corded if you're not familiar and you can see right in the beginning these are green tips, which just means I have more work to do because it's all of them. Now it is white on the bottom, so I wouldn't do this if it was a dirty ground. I'd go somewhere a little bit more clean so I don't smudge up my, smudge up my diffuser. You can go ahead and just, I start putting these in, not clipping them all the way in and just going around and placing them uh, because it can get a little confusing. Mine are a little bit bent. I guess I have used this before, apparently before I knew what I was doing. So I just like lining them all up first. All right, once I have them all lined up and we're good, spread it out a little bit more, then start to actually push them in. This one's a little bit bent, but that's okay. That'll, that'll do the job. Now, because this is a small light source, really it's, you know, two feet in diameter, it's gonna produce more of a hard light if I have it too far away from my subject. So I wanna make sure it's nice and close to Juliana to give her the softest light possible on her. 
All right, just so you can see the difference, we're gonna keep her in exactly the same spot. I'll go ahead and take a photo without this. So since I know Juliana prefers one side, I'm actually gonna put the light on the opposite side so that she can always give me her favorite side and I'm not broad lighting her, I'm short lighting her. All right, so since we're lighting the front of her face, it's actually nice to have Juliana in a spot where the sun is hitting the back of her head. Again, it's like two light sources and you just wanna mess with it as much as possible. Now I've placed this off to the side so we'll get a little bit of a short light, but not too dramatic. I don't wanna create a ton of shadows because I do want this to look somewhat natural. I don't want it to look crazy. I almost want it to look like I'm throwing a reflector in her face but I'm not. The reflector is nice, but because I don't have an assistant, not so great if I want to shoot with a long lens. Shoot her with a 135, I have to be further away, my reflector isn't gonna do anything. So this is a perfect spot. It's up a little bit high and tilted down. That will help accentuate her jawline and her cheekbones without it being so far up that it's gonna give her raccoon eyes. I'll show you a trick on how to get rid of the raccoon eyes if you are having that problem. It does depend on how deep set a person's eyes are. Your eyes are not deep set at all, but Lord knows we have plenty of people that we photograph and they have more deep set eyes and you'll run into that problem. So I don't wanna leave you hanging on that. All right, let's take a photo. Now, this time when we're getting our exposure, we're gonna take a photo of Juliana as if, again, we don't have this on, this is off right now, but I'm really taking it to expose for the background and the highlights that are on her hair. So it's gonna be a little bit darker than my last exposure, so I think I'm gonna go down to 100. I wanna stay at 2.0, because who doesn't wanna stay at 2.0? All right, there we go, that looks pretty good. A little blown out in the background, but I'll probably actually just change my angle slightly. Solve most of that problem. There we go. Good, so this looks pretty good, but I'd love to see a little bit of pop in her eyes. So that's where the soft camera flash comes in. We're just gonna put it on. Again, turn it on and have it on TTL. You know, if your camera can do the job for you, if your light can do the job for you, let the tech do its job. So start with TTL. And let's go ahead and take a shot. All right, so off the bat, it's pretty on target as far as light power, but my white balance is a little cold. So I'm gonna go ahead, flip to manual. I think I'm gonna lower my light maybe by like a half a stop. It's a bit bright, but not super bright. And then I'm gonna go ahead and raise my white balance. White balance is a little bit subjective but I do tend to like a warmer shot. So let's try that one more time. That looks really pretty, double check. Yes, perfect. Turn, uh, pull your hair this way a little bit. Yeah. You've got such fun hair, you cannot play with it. Beautiful. So you're gonna stay there. Now the cool thing about this is you don't have to stay in one spot. You can move around. So you're actually gonna keep like looking towards Rob and then I'm gonna move around. And you can even get kind of like a profile. Beautiful. Let me do that one more time, it's a really bright spot. And come back around. Nice, and then turn this way a little bit with your body. Perfect. These look pretty good. You know, they look natural. She's lit well, but she's not overlit. You know, she's not looking like she has a studio light there. It looks like natural light, but a little bit more pop. Let's do one more thing that I find fun. We're gonna come a little bit closer and give her more of a clamshell type lighting. Light close to someone like this. Make sure the, the heavier part of the light is over a stand, uh, but also, Good to put your bag on it too, or have a sandbag. So we're gonna do that. Just give it a little extra weight. It's not windy, so I'm not worried. All right, so what you can do now, because this is gonna give her a little bit more dramatic of a look, I'm also gonna turn down my light. Let me just test one more time. Yeah, this looks really good. It's coming from above, so it's a more dramatic 
angle. So you are going to start seeing really nice cheekbones. You're going to start seeing really nice jawline, but you will start to see a little bit under the eyes. So that's where a reflector comes in. So I'm going to get this as close to your face as possible. Uh, you don't have to. Okay. Perfect. And then look a little towards Rob. Right there. That's good. Love that. Okay. So what this did is just filled in the light a little bit under eyes, a little bit under her neck, give it a little bit more pop. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and move to the 135 because honestly, that is what I would prefer to shoot with. And since I'm not holding the reflector, I can walk a little bit further away. Let's bring this back down to that not so dramatic angle. So it's a little bit more forgiving and fill her in. So she's here. I'm not pointing it directly at her. So I wanted to feather kind of in front of her. So right now this is pointed right past her as opposed to this will be pointed right at her. I prefer feathering it slightly in front. It's going to just look a little bit more natural, a little bit more spread out. I tend to like to have the bottom part of this around eye level for her. Let me show you before and after. <laughs> I want a little bit different of a look, so I am going to go into high speed sync so I can really darken the background and just light her. I'm going to throw it back on TTL. All right, so that is pointed right at her. It's a very subtle difference, but it makes, I think, a big difference. You know, she doesn't have so much of a spotlight on the left hand side as when you feather it, it wraps around just a little bit more. Okay, now I'll actually photograph you, <laughs> sorry. Nice, and you can just kind of move with each click. Perfect. Love it, ooh, wait one second. Oh, this is fun. So I've got some leaves here, we're just gonna use as foreground. Really pretty. Love it. Nice. And then give me a more like serious kind of look. Yeah, perfect. Love it. So I hope I've given you some ideas on using off-camera flash to create a natural look or even unnatural if you want to. It's really whatever you would like to do and what you'd like to create. That's, that's the fun of it. I'm Vanessa Joy. Thanks so much for joining this webinar and we've got Q&A coming up.